This is my TNA No Surrender 2009 pay-per-view predictions. Before I get into my predictions for this pay-per-view, it's going to be live exclusively on pay-per-view tomorrow night. I just want to plug three channels. The first one being everyone's familiar with his uh, former channel, which is um, MB Wrestler 87 He recently got his account suspended. And if you don't know of his new account at this moment yet, he's, his new account is MB Wrestler 1987 instead of 87 so I'll put the link for his new channel in the description. And um, two other channels that recently got suspended as well. Sanders Robin, he recently got his account suspended. And he has a new account, Sanders Robin 24 In my opinion, he's probably the guy on YouTube that probably makes some of the best videos um, on, uh, you know, reviewing wrestling. And he talks about other stuff other than wrestling. He's a big M um, NBA fan and basketball fan. So subscribe to his new account if you are formally subscribed to him. Or if you weren't formally subscribed to him, Check him out. He makes very good videos. And the last one I want to plug is uh, Wrestling Fans, Inc. They recently got their channel uh, suspended. And um, their new channel is um, WFI2. So I'll put all the links for those in the description. So um, if any of you were ne never subscribed to any of these three, subscribe to them. I'm pretty sure everyone viewing this was obviously at some point subscribed to MB Wrestler 87 But if you're not... If you don't know his new account, his new account I'll put in the description. Same with the other two, Sanders Robin 24 and WFI number two. And um, let me get on to my predictions for this TNA pay per view. Now, this pay per view for a pay per view building up to Bound for Glory it doesn't look like it's going to be a bad pay per view. It doesn't look like it's going to be terrible. It doesn't look like it's going to be a great. It's going to be pretty much probably an average pay per view, probably you know an average pay per view from TNA at best. Because there's a few things on here that I'm kind of interested in. I'm kind of interested in the title match and see who will come out the winner of that. Uh, Bobby Lashley's debut, I'm kind of interested to see how he'll do in his debut. And um, Lethal Lockdown and the exhibition match on here looks pretty good. Um, now let me get on to my predictions. First match, now I'm reading this off of the way TNA's got this on their website. First match, Hernandez versus Eric Young. Um, they have been pushing Eric Young a little too much too much than what they should be doing. Hernandez seems like he's going to be getting a push too. Um, so I see Hernandez going over this match. It'll be idiotic for Eric Young to uh, win this match. So Hernandez will go over in this match. It'll probably be, you know, maybe a watchable match. Watchable match at best. Next match will be for uh, $50,000 Bounty versus the Legends Championship, which is Abyss versus Kevin Nash. Kevin Nash wins this match. Not only does he keep the Legends Championship, he gets the $50,000 $50, Bounty from Abyss. So, and if Abyss wins this, obviously he gets the... Um, Legends Championship. Now, they've been changing this Legends Champion so much, I would say they will not change this. Um, and I see Kevin Ash retaining this title, getting the $50,000 bounty, maybe uh, doing something where uh, Abyss beats him up post-match. Maybe you do something with uh, Cactus Jack or Mick Foley come out here, because I would like to see them build up to a uh, Mick Foley slash Cactus Jack under his Cactus Jack persona versus Abyss for Bound for Glory, because that just, you know, is one of those matches you need to put on for your big show, and just have Kevin Nash, you just have, have him take on some other legend, or take, have him take on someone else, and they've been switching the tiles so much, I don't think they'll do it yet again, and I don't understand why they would even think about putting, a, you know, the title on Abyss, so Kevin Nash will uh, win, this, win this match, and probably just be, you know, a typical big man match. Abyss is... is very good for a big man, but Kevin Ash, you know, for his age right now, and he's definitely well past his prime, this match is probably not going to be that, you know, good at all. Now, the next matchup will be the Beautiful People uh, versus Taylor Wilde and Sarita for the uh, TNA, for the finals of the TNA Knockouts Tag Team Championships. And um, this match, I would say, if this was Velvet Sky and Angelina Love, it would be no question they would go over and win the, you know, be the first ever TNA Knockouts Tag Team Champions. Now, it's kind of questionable to even do this whole Knockouts Tag Team Championships because I don't really think you got enough women within your division within TNA to actually do both a solid, you know, singles division and tag team division. It's just, you know, just overbooked and too many titles within TNA. And I see uh, Taylor Wilde and Sarita being the first ever TNA Knockouts champion since obviously you're not going to have Angelina Love there. Looks like it's going to be Velvet Sky and Madison Rain. I don't think they'll be the first Knockouts Tag Team Champions. So you have Taylor Wilde and Sarita go over. Now, both of them are pretty good uh, women's performers. And Velvet Sky is not terrible, but uh, Ma uh, Madison Rain is not good at all. 
This match would have been probably a whole lot better if it had Angelina Love in the position of Madison Rain. It probably actually would have been a good women's match. Now it's probably just going to be, you know, maybe a watchful, you know, women's tag team match at best. Um, but maybe, you know, Serena, maybe Taylor Wilde, maybe both of them could pull something out and make it a little uh, better than what a lot of people are probably expecting. Now the next match, this is just a joke. They're even doing this match. And this is ODB versus Cody Diener for the TNA Knockouts Championship. Now, hopefully they will not give the title officially to Cody Diener. That's the one thing. At least TNA, as stupid as the ODB and Cody Diener thing is, and all the stupid skits they've been doing with it, and you know, everything they've been building up since matches, stupid as hell. Thankfully, they don't really have him holding the title. That's the one thing. And I probably... <laughs> I'm saying, saying this just out of hope they don't do this, but I don't think they will. I think ODB will officially be the TNA Knockouts Champion, even though she already is. And Cody Diener will lose this match. This match will just be a complete joke, and it's not worthy of being on paper. This is something that you know they shouldn't even thought about doing. They should just gave the title to ODB, or just you know had uh, whoever was champion just keep it. Um, but that probably would have been bad for TNA at this point since the whole work visa issue with Angelina Love. So. Maybe it worked out best they got the title off of her. Um, but they could have done something better than ODB and Cody Diener for, you know, the TNA Knockouts Championship. And ODB will go over this match. Hopefully they do some good women's match for uh, TNA Bound for Glory. Maybe they'll do something where the title, where ODB loses the title on Impact to maybe either um, Awesome Kong or uh, Tara. And them two take on each other at um, Bound for Glory. Because I think that's one women's match that people really would love to see it, you know. TNA's, you know, so-called, you know, their version of WrestleMania, their version of the Super Bowl, and I think, you know, for that pay-per-view, you're going to need to have a lot of good matches to actually have people think that it's one of your biggest shows, or even have people go out their way to purchase the pay-per-view. Now, the next matchup will be the uh, TNA uh, Lethal Lockdown match with uh, Beer Money versus Team 3D versus Scott Steiner and Booker T versus British Invasion, and um, within this match, um, this match could be actually pretty good with the stipulation of it being lethal lockdown. That's going to be interesting to see how this is done with the, you know, the tag team match, um, but it should probably be pretty good. I'm actually not saying this is going to be a bad match, but it's definitely going to help out better than this being a, you know, a regular four-way, you know, tag team match than having the stipulation of lethal lockdown, but the one thing that does kind of, you know, Okay, you already have you have lethal lockdown. It's supposed to be one of your staples for a locked a lockdown pay per view. Now you're doing it in another pay per view. Kind of devalues the whole stipulation and gimmick of that match, but it does help out this match. I will say, and I say, um, yes, uh, beer money will go over. It's not like you know I really care who goes over, but I think beer money should go. Beer money or Team 3D probably will be the ones to go over. I see beer money going over in this match. Then the next matchup will be for the TNA X Division Championship. This will be Daniels versus Samoa Joe. This match I'm really looking forward to. Hopefully they give this match some time, and hopefully it's not a complete squash. Um, but I see some way or another this match is going to end in you know a disqualification, no contest, and Samoa Joe is going to keep a hold of the X Division Championship, and then maybe you know build up to another match for these two to happen at Bound for Glory, where Daniels defeats him at that pay per view, because. Um, I don't see, you know, if Samoa Joe loses the title to Daniels, who is Daniels going to take on next month? And if Samoa Joe, you know, loses the title, I mean, who's Samoa Joe going to take on next month? So it just makes sense, you know, have this end in, you know, some kind of screwy fashion, no contest, something like that. Joe keeps hold of the title. Then they take on each other next month. But hopefully, even if they end this match in that type of fashion at tomorrow night's pay-per-view, hopefully they give them, you know, enough time and actually showcase, you know, a pretty good match. But, Obviously, some people probably won't like the ending if they do do that, but if they just build it up to something good about Glory, I'll be okay with it. So, see, some type of fashion, you know, I think Daniels will win this match via disqualification or the, no contest, no one will win. It will do something like that, and then they'll take on each other at next month's pay-per-view. Now, the next month match will be the uh, debut of Bobby Lashley versus Rhino. Now, this is, you know, an okay match to put him in, have him go against Rhino. Um, obviously, I don't think this is going to be a quick squash, but it's probably going to be, you know, probably a little less than 10 minutes, probably 8 to 10 minute match. Rhino will get in some offense, but uh, Bobby Lashley will pretty much dominate most of the match. It'll be interesting to see how Bobby Lashley does, because I actually do not mind him coming to TNA. I don't mind TNA utilizing him, but the one thing I don't want them to do is push him too quick to the main events, because... 
obviously, you know, I don't know if this is the way it's going to end up being on the pay-per-view, but the way they got listed on their website, his match is just a match before the main event, so obviously they are pushing Bobby Lashley pretty strong, but it makes sense. It's his debut. You know, you don't want to put him too early on the show, and people are obviously going to be interested to see how Bobby Lashley does, and Lashley's obviously going to go over this match. I don't think anyone's thinking Rhino even has a chance in hell winning this match, so Bobby Lashley will obviously go over this match. Then you got the main event for the TA World Heavyweight Championship. You got Sting versus AJ Styles versus Matt Morgan versus Kurt Angle, and this could possibly be you know, a, a solid main event from TNA. Um, now, the last month's pay-per-view where it was Matt Morgan, Sting, and Kurt Angle, it just didn't turn out as good as what it was, uh, what it could have probably been, been uh, but it was probably, you know, too short as well. So, you know, hopefully this, like the Exodus match, gets a good amount of time. And, you know, just as long as you have AJ Styles and, you know, Kurt Angle work a good portion of the match together, um, AJ and Sting have good chemistry, and, you know, it, just in slow in slow doses, just don't, you know, have them in there too long. Sting and Angle work okay against each other just as long as they're not, you know, taking on each other in a full match. And Matt Morgan, you know, just have him do just do his typical big man moves, just a few things within the match. And this match could actually turn out to be a decent match. And I see in this match, I see the title change, and I see Sting becoming the new TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Obviously, a lot of people are probably going to dislike seeing that if that happens, but here, there's one thing that could actually, actually hear me out on this, that's actually one good thing that could come from this, and that's, you know, you got the whole, you know, it looks like they're building up to a Sting versus AJ Styles match at Bound for Glory, so, you know, have Sting win the title here, have him go in as champion at Bound for Glory, have him and AJ Styles take on each other, and have AJ Styles, you know, walk out as world champion, it's long overdue, it's almost four and a half years since he's been world champion in TNA is the first time, you know, since the whole Spike TV era that he'll be world champion. So hopefully we'll see that. You know, Sting won the title here, AJ Styles won the title next month. And I think a lot of people will be okay with that having, you know, just a, you know, month long or a few week title reign from Sting. I don't think that many people will have too much of a problem with that just as long as they don't have Sting, you know, walk in as champion and walk out as champion for Bound for Glory, which hopefully they wouldn't do something stupid like that. But I think if he walks in as champion, you got a match with AJ Styles. I don't think you'll have to worry too much about that. 